Damn demons. You really think you can kill me? Try me. I will take back all the 48 body parts the fiend stole from me. found one. These fiends live off the sorrow and despair of humans. I'm here to take back my body. voice. It's my own voice. I got my voice back. Ah! The world was ravaged by unending war. The people cried to the heavens, their hearts full of despair. Unbeknownst to them, the world was at the mercy of a group of vile demons known as fiends. One day, a terrible omen appeared in the sky. When morning came, not one, but two suns rose in the east. However, while one sun shined more brightly than ever, the other gave off a dull, black light, as if it were but a shadow of the real sun. It seemed as though the gods of the heavens could no longer bear to witness the troubled times on earth and parted ways with the gods of darkness. The gods of darkness, the fiends, looked upon this omen with fear. To them, the appearance of two sons foretold the birth of a human that would have the power to end their dark rule. However, the fiends could not destroy this child of light themselves. They discovered, however, they could corrupt the child's birth parents. The fiends approached Kagimitsu Daigo, a local samurai, and the future father of the child of light, and enticed him with promises of power. One night, in his dreams, Kagimitsu Daigo saw a vision. In this vision, he was told that he would be given the power to bring order to this chaotic world. Daigo, thinking that he had received a vision from the heavens, gathered all his courage and ventured to the temple called the Gates of Hell alone. As Daigo stood there, surrounded by the possessed statues of the 48 fiends, he was told that the price of his power would be his firstborn child. The sudden demand threw Daigo into a panic. Heightened by the echoing laughter of the fiends, his mind began to twist, and Daigo's reason and judgment failed him at last. He signed the contract. A few days later, Daigo's child was born. This was much to the surprise of Daigo himself, as he had expected the fiends would lay claim to his child. 
Daigo dared to allow himself to feel a moment of joy and relief. But that moment proved to be short-lived. Shadows gathered over the newborn, wrapping themselves around its tiny body. A voice sounded from within the shadows. The body of your son now belongs to the 48 fiends. As promised, you shall be granted the power to bring order to this pitiful world. You shall never know defeat in battle from this day forth. Your path to victory shall be littered with the corpses of those who defy you. Forty-eight parts of the infant's body had been stolen by the fiends. Seeing what happened to his son, Daigo let out a blood-curdling scream in anguish. Suddenly, Daigo sprang into action. He snatched up the infant in his arms, jumped atop his trusty steed Midoro. His wife desperately tried to stop him, but Daigo shrugged her off and made his way toward the river. all the demons. Hmm? My arm? It's fake. Let's not go telling everyone about this, okay? Why are you following me? <laughs> that sword in your arm. I bet it was forged by a master swordsmith. I don't know. Maybe it was. It works good enough for me. I thought so. Hmm. You mind if I take it? Take it? You? Don't make me laugh. I am the world-famous thief, Dororo. Come rain or shine, once I set my eyes on a treasure, it's mine. I don't think you get it. This thing is attached to my arm. It's a part of me. You can't get rid of me that easily. I will get that sword. Are you stupid? Staying near me is certain death. You saw them, didn't you? I'm haunted by ghosts and demons. <laughs> well, the world-famous thief is afraid of nothing. Thief or not, don't follow me. Oh! Uh, help! Dororo! Let me go! Let me go! Help! <laughs> Thanks for your help. I'll cover your back. Sword arms have leveled up. I can see. I can see through my left eye. Dororo. You're Dororo. Your voice is a little annoying, but you're a cuter kid than I thought. <laughs> hey, is that your eye? Go ahead. Pick it up. It's a fake eye! You scared? I don't blame you. When I was a baby, 
I was found floating in the river in a barrel. Having returned from his studies in China, the physician Zhu Kai had been gathering herbs near the river. To his surprise, he came upon a barrel floating by, carrying in it a tiny infant. Perhaps it was his medical training that urged him to save the child, or perhaps it was human instinct. But Zhu Kai did not hesitate but for a second before he rescued the child from the barrel. Yet upon examining the child, he was at a loss for words, for he did not know any medicines that could help this cursed infant. However, as Jukai fed the child, he watched the infant sip at its porridge. He felt its burning desire to live and decided to raise the child as his own. One day, a strange voice buzzed in Jukai's ear. Feed me. Feed me the voice pleaded. He looked around in search of the source of the voice. The infant was staring straight at him with its empty eyes. Could it be, he said aloud, were you the one speaking to me? Yes, the voice echoed in his mind. Jukai realized that the child could speak directly to his mind. From that day forward, Jukai communicated with the child telepathically and taught him everything he needed to know about living in this cruel world. When the child turned three, Jukai made a decision. He decided to operate on the child. He would use all his medical knowledge to give the child everything he was missing. Arms, legs, eyes, nose, ears, everything that the child lacked. He began the operation. After many, many hours, a miracle happened. At the end of the surgery, when the anesthetics had worn off, the child opened his eyes. And for the first time, the child had a complete body. And he had a name. Hyakimaru. Within a month after the surgery, Hyakimaru began to learn to use his new body. He sat up, moved his legs, and took his first steps. He stumbled many times, but every time he picked himself back up and tried again. The pain was nearly unbearable, and every day he worked himself to the point of nearly collapsing. Soon Hyakimaru was able to run about as free as any child. When Hyakimaru turned six, Jukai had been watching him run and play like any child would, despite the fact that he could not see. He knew at that moment that with such wondrous gifts, a strange and fantastic destiny would surely be awaiting Hyakimaru. As Hyakimaru grew older, strange things began to occur. Demons began to appear all around them, watching their every move. When Hyakimaru turned 18, he visited a local temple. While praying, a voice spoke to him from the heavens. The 48 fiends have each taken a part of your body, young Hyakimaru. You must slay these fiends and retrieve what is rightfully yours. However, the fiends have also created a human out of your body parts. Slay the fiends, or their human creation, and you shall become whole once again. Hyakimaru, sensing the seriousness of the situation, sat down to speak with Jukai. Hyakimaru knew that the fiends were after him. He knew it was because of his special powers that the demons wanted him dead. Even though he had artificial limbs, and could not see nor hear. He could see things with some sort of innate sixth sense. He knew that the fiends considered him a threat and would do anything to get rid of him. Hyakimaru decided that he must seek out the fiends and destroy them. To help him accomplish this, Jukai decided to perform one final operation on Hyakimaru. 
he fitted Hyakimaru's body with various powerful weapons. As Hyakimaru prepared to set off on his quest, Jukai warned Hyakimaru of the dangers he was sure to face. He explained that fiends lived off of human suffering and grief. He told Hyakimaru that if he encountered any peoples burdened with inexplicable pain or suffering, chances are he would find a fiend nearby. If it's free, I'll take it. Bamboo thicket. Just ahead. So shiny. Hey, Yaki. Did you see that creep last night? Yeah. You looked so scared, I thought you'd start crying. <laughs> you'd think I was scared of that freak? If I gave him a nasty look, he'd have run away crying. He was probably an amateur thief. He's probably headed for that village over there. We should go check it out. But seriously, what kind of thief goes around ringing a bell like that? Yeah, you've got a good point. You say you saw a man ringing a bell? You saw the troll? The, these two saw the troll! Who the heck is the troll? Men, quickly! We must bring them to Mistress Yuda! Yeah! Oh, what are you doing? We haven't done anything! I have been told that you two have met the troll. Quite unlucky for you. However, I cannot undo your bonds just yet. What's going on? Why can't you let us go? The troll is, of course, not human. It is a monster, an evil spirit. He would have spoken to one of you. To which of you did he speak? What did he say to you? I must know what he said. I... I didn't hear anything. How about you, sir? Don't know. That is impossible. If you do not answer my question, I cannot release your bonds. Now tell me the truth. There is nothing to be gained by lying to me. Said I don't know. Yucky! You leave me no choice. I shall put you in the well room like all the others. Come on, Yaki. What did the troll say to you? You can tell me. Quiet. Something's coming from the well. This 
just keeps getting better and better. demon. But I've never encountered one so powerful before. It might be a demon that stole one of my body parts. I cut it pretty deep. I need to go into the well to see if it's dead. Hey! Hang on just a second! Leave it to me! This is what I do best! You die. That damn woman meant to kill us. She never expected us to get out of this place alive. I wonder how many people she has tied up here and fed to that demon. But why is she so intent on killing anyone who saw the troll? There must be some sort of connection between Yudai and the troll. We should check the bamboo thicket that the troll mentioned. I found some sort of tunnel! And there's blood leading to it! Get back up here! That probably leads to where the demon lives! I can feel a breeze! This passage probably leads somewhere outside! I'm gonna go check it out real quick! Don't be stupid! Get back here, Dororo! Someone's there! Get him! Huh? Yeah. Uh, 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 damn it! Let me go! Tie him up and bring him to the East Town Square! What did the troll mean by shiny? Guess I have to find something shiny in this bamboo thicket. Huh? So I guess this is what the troll was talking about. I don't get it though. Damn it! Let me go! Dororo! Hang on! I'm coming for you! Just who do you think you are, sneaking into Mistress Yudai's house? You don't know who I am? I'm the world-famous thief Dororo! World-famous thief? What's this fool talking about? You are out of luck. Mistress Yudai has spent all of her own money helping us. I'm afraid she has nothing left to steal. Now tell us what the troll told you! Tell us everything, or you'll regret it! Sorry to keep you waiting. What took you so long? Answer me this. Who is that woman you die? And what exactly is the troll? Mistress Yudai is a saint who has taken pity on this village. She has done much for us. She has helped us in ways you cannot imagine. If she's so rich and compassionate, why is this village still so poor? It doesn't add up. Sometimes a terrible demon ravages the village and steals our money. If it wasn't for Mistress Yudai, We'd all be dead by now. Exactly what kind of demon? I've never gotten a good look, but it's a disgusting looking creature. Sounds a lot like that demon that attacked us in the well. What do you know about the troll? I'm afraid we don't know much about it. We have been told to bring anyone who sees the troll to Mistress Yudai. 
Well, it told me something you might find interesting. Huh? He came to me and said, you want some? So I said, if it's free, I'll take whatever you've got. Then he told me about a rather interesting place. Where? Follow me! I don't think so. How are we gonna get there? Trust him? It's too long to go. You want some? You want oh. some? It's the troll! Oh my god! You Roll away! Some? Everyone, wait! The troll, he's trying to show you something. You want some? You want some? Come on, quicker! All right, everyone, dig. It's money. We found our money. It's the money that demon stole from us. This isn't a dream, right? I can't believe it. Our money. That looks like all. Huh. Who had the money here, Yaki? I yes. think I yes. have an idea who. Huh? Run! There's a demon coming! You have retrieved your money? Yes. A traveling warrior discovered it buried in a bamboo thicket. I see. In a bamboo thicket, you say? Well, that is lovely. I am afraid we have been such a burden on you, Mistress Yudai. Do not worry about it. You may take your leave. Yes, milady. The troll isn't a demon. It's more like a money spirit. It just wanted someone to dig up the money and use it like it's meant to be used. The money's been dug up, so it won't come back again. Who are you, anyway? Behold! He who stands before you is neither demon nor beast. He is the great warrior Hiyakimaru. He travels throughout the lands, defeating demons wherever he goes. And I am his trusty sidekick. Roro, that's enough. What can you tell me about Yudai? She has been looking after this village since the days of my great-grandfather. Your great-grandfather? How long she been alive? She's a demon, I tell ya. Mistress Yudai is an angel. That's why she doesn't age. An angel? Our great-grandfathers built this village, but it was attacked by a demon. It destroyed their homes, took all their money. It left them with nothing. Then, Mistress Yudai came and blessed them with donations. With that money, our great-grandfathers rebuilt the village. The demon always returned, but Mistress Yudai always helped us. The village has survived, and things are getting better. That Yudai lady is a fraud. That, that's absurd! Come on, what sort of fraud gives away money? This entire village is cursed by a demon. I can sense it. Was all the money returned to its rightful owners? Yeah. Then the monster will probably appear again and attack the village. It can't be. What? I don't believe We must set up defenses tonight. Dororo, go to Yudai's manor and see if you can find out anything about her. Uh-huh. If you find anything suspicious, call to me in your mind. My mind? Just shout my name inside your head. Trust me, I'll hear you. I gotcha. First, I need to find proof that Yudai is stealing everyone's money. I just need to find some money that seems out of place. Uh. Hey, there's...
there's some money. Wait, what's in this bag? More money! Hmm, there's a name written on the bag. Mokube. This is the money stolen from the villagers. This proves you die is crooked. Hmm, which means we've probably got a fight with a demon on our hands. I should look for a weapon. in such a nice display. It's gotta be powerful. Hiyaki might need it. And if not, I'm sure a relic like this could fetch a hefty price. It's almost night. I should check up on Yudai to see if she's up to anything. Hmm. This looks like a part of that monster that attacked us. Hiyaki, I found that demon's antenna in Yudai's bedroom. What? Really? Yeah, and guess what? She's not even here. Good. Well done, Dororo. The mucus trail leads into the bamboo thicket. The demon must be in there. all this. Damn, she got away. I have to warn Dororo. Dororo, Yudai is heading toward the village. She's the demon. Watch out. I hear you loud and clear. Hiyaki, she's headed back to her manor. Yaki, Yudai's probably in here. I've got this whole place memorized. You ready to go in yet? Yudai, your days of terrorizing this village are over, demon witch. I'll send you back to the Hellfire from whence you came. <laughs> Impudent fool. Don't you realize I have ruled this valley for a thousand years? You have discovered my secret. Now you shall perish! Hyakimaru, I shall devour you! Just 
the banner! Huh? It wasn't glowing like this earlier. Good job, Dororo. It looks like this may work against the demon. Dororo! I'm on it! Dororo, you okay? I'll get you, Baldas! Yakimaro! It appears that you, too, are cursed by demons. We have had enough trouble with demons. I'm afraid you will have to leave. What? We save your stupid village and this is the thanks we get? If he hadn't helped you, that demon Yudai would still be torturing you. You'd all still be her slaves! So? I don't remember any of that. What do you want us to do? It doesn't matter. I can't help you now. We didn't know you were a demon. Nothing yeah, it's not for us. If we knew That's that, enough, Dororo. That demon... No. That fiend... was drawn by your unwillingness to save yourselves. She pretended to be compassionate, but she used you all like slaves. She kept you on the brink of death only so she could watch you suffer. She fed off your suffering and sorrow. That's what fiends do. Rebuild your village. Bring peace into your lives. Do it with your own hands. Let's go, Dororo. I'm glad they found peace. Yeah. The child has survived. Hyakimaru. Hyakimaru is the enemy of the fiends. Hyakimaru must perish. Demons of the underworld, you must kill Hyakimaru. Nothing shall stop us from building our demon world! Yakimaru had at last saved the village from the powerful fiend. Yet the villagers began to look at Hyakimaru with growing suspicion. They began to fear and hate his power. Yet Yakimaru did not mind. He had learned that not only could he regain his lost body parts by defeating the fiends, he could bring happiness back to the people of this world. Hyakimaru looked to the heavens and swore an oath. He would defeat the 48 fiends and make himself whole again, no matter what dangers may lie ahead. This wound was caused by a sword. Oh no! There's dead people, too! It's the same wound as the dogs. Probably killed by the same person. But these people aren't warriors. Who would kill simple villagers for no reason?
Looks like today's not your day. My sword craves blood, and unfortunately for you, it wants yours. What? Yes, you shall have your blood. Be a good boy and calm down. That sword is either an enchanted blade, or one that is possessed by fiends. <gasps> Time to die, boy. I think this sword would like to disagree with you. This is going nowhere. We shall continue another time. Yaki! I'm gonna go follow that guy! Hey, stay away from that sword! I gotta become stronger! With a sword like that, nobody make fun of me! I'm gonna get that sword no matter what! Yeah! Blood. Huh? Who... who said that? Who... who's there? Blood. Blood. I must have blood. Huh? Kill. You must kill. No! No! I... I don't want to kill people! I just wanted a sword! Kill! <laughs> Where the heck did Dororo go? Telepathy isn't working either. I should check the nearby village. Help! Dororo, stop! Dororo, what happened? I've been possessed. Looks like I've got no other choice. I told you not to get near that sword. I... Uh, I'm sorry. You hurt? No, I, I think I'm okay. I'm sorry, miss, I really am. When I grabbed that sword, a voice kept telling me to kill, kill! Next thing I know, I'm attacking you! I've heard a lot of stories of people getting killed just outside the village. Maybe that sword is the cause of it all. The sword's partly to blame, but its owner is just as evil. He knows the sword's power, but he doesn't try to get rid of it. It's almost as if he enjoys being controlled by it. That's horrible. Don't worry. Hyaki here will give him a good beating next time we see him. That's very reassuring. But my big brother will be returning soon. He's a swordsman who was sent to guard the local castle. Impressive! What's his name? His name is Tanosuke. I'm Misaki. I'm Dororo. The big lug here is Hyaki Maru. We both have very unusual names. But I must get going. Take care, Yakimaru. Dororo, don't go attacking people anymore, okay? Right. Yaki, we gotta find that guy before he starts killing again. He's gotta be close. We must find him. Hey, that's Misaki's voice. Tanosuke.
Misaki. You're back. I can't believe you're really back. Misaki. I was just at the temple this morning, praying you'd come home soon. My prayers were answered. I've been back for almost half a year now. Huh? I, I thought you went to guard the castle. Yes, I did. And His Majesty personally awarded me with an incredible sword. But I used it to kill hundreds of castle workers. It was all to defend the castle secrets. But that... Your Lord ordered you to do it, right? Yes, but... Since then... It's felt like the sword has been wielding me instead. The sword constantly craved blood. I became its slave. I couldn't return to your side, so I stayed near the village, wandering. Look what I've become. But it's all that sword's fault. We need to take it to the shrine. Kill. I'm sorry, Misaki. Dragon Brood craves blood again. Misaki! Hmm? Hey! <clears throat> oh. Ugh! Damn. Not now. Dragon Brood needs more power. Please, help my brother. That sword grows stronger as it drinks more blood. Then... we have to stop him! Yeah, he's getting stronger by the minute. We have found you, Tenosuke. Or should I say, Dragon Brood? Wait! Please, don't kill him! Misaki... Your brother is a good swordsman. And his sword is extremely powerful. He'll kill me if I don't kill him first. No! Just drop your sword, Tenosuke. I know once, you had a human heart. At some point, perhaps. But Dragon Brood just keeps telling me it needs more blood. And when I satisfy it, I am overcome with such euphoria and pleasure. <laughs> Tenosuke's mind is completely lost. There's no going back. Is that all? Kimaru, this way! Leveled up. Don't escape! Dragon Brood! Misaki! Watch out! This is my sword. You will have to pry it from my cold fingers if you want it. Give me blood. Dragon Brood needs blood. Don't worry, I will feed you soon enough. But I cannot give you his. You shall have mine! No! Drink. Drink. This is your last feast. Die, fiend! The sword. Dragon Brood is dead. Tarasuke. No.
My back! Oh, it burns! Chucky! I'm... I'm fine. Uh, looks like I... I got my spine back. You'll be all right, Chucky. Murderer! I asked you to help him! That's not fair, Misaki! Chucky killed that demon sword! If he didn't, it probably would have killed everyone for food! And... and Hyaki... He, he even tried to get the sword away from him! Don't escape. You're all evil! How could you do this to my brother? Murderer! I don't ever want to see you again. Get out of here! I'm... sorry things turned out this way. For you and your brother. Hyaki <laughs> Maru was unable to save the girl's brother from the clutches of the fiends, yet he was able to regain a precious body part. Everywhere he turned, there was both happiness and sorrow, hope and despair. He began to doubt whether or not the world could truly ever know peace. Yakimaru clears his mind of lingering doubts and continues on. He must continue to fight. <laughs> <laughs>